and you feel like there's no prospects here and you don't want to be like you know that that wayang guy that works very very hard <laughs> promote it to Piao Yen Ma I get it right or you need to go yeah. out and network that's why it's called performance review yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so welcome back to another episode of Wise and Shine. I'm your host Reggie, aka your Chief Financial Coconut. Hi, my name is Eric, Mr. Positivity. <laughs> I'll get used to it. I'll get used to it. Give me some time, yes. I'm Kevin from Kevin Learns Investing. Alan from Li Cha Oye, do listen to our shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for the Chinese show, very good. Very good. Yes, yes. <laughs> I keep selling. I, I work very hard for this, right? Sell, selling the Chinese show. But yes, today, we're going to talk about the hot topic in town. Right? I also don't know why it's so hot. Lah, because it feels like time before this thing had a name, uh, people were already doing it. Right? There are a lot of people. Yeah, at least now I have a name to what I've been doing last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Oh, so I was quiet quitting. <laughs> oh. Yes, yes. So, so this is the, the whole new thing. I mean, I did a monologue about it and I also texted Kelvin. Hey, this one, this topic will work. No? Said, yeah, yeah, this topic will go viral. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he assured me, right? So um, yeah, we want to talk a little bit about can quiet quitting be healthy? Because uh, today, a lot of the coverage about quiet quitting either is like TikTok rants, you know, about why people hate their lives and all those kind of stuff. Or the other side where mainstream media really covers it from a view that you know, it's a very top-down view, like, you know, the companies trying to tell you don't quiet quit, government trying to tell you don't quiet quit, because I know they have a certain set of concern, right? They want mm. the companies to grow, they want the country mm. to move, so I get it. But today, we speak from ground up, right? Trying to talk a little bit about can quiet quitting in itself be a healthy process, you know, or is there value in quiet quitting? Right, and I think that's the that's a part that is that's under discussed. It's either a mad rant about why they hate their lives and I want to quiet quit, or the other side of like, no, you shouldn't quit. You should just keep moving, right? So, uh, I think that's kind of the the spot where I want to go. Can quiet quitting be healthy? So first, I need to make sure what is quiet quitting. What's the definition of that? Mm. Maybe you can define quiet quitting. Okay, so from what I know, quiet quitting is like you work from a nine to six job means that you work nine to six, and after that you just leave home. So while, while doing this topic, I realized that there's another version of quiet quitting, which is in a 9 to 6 job, you just do the bare minimum and you don't do extra stuff that is asked for you. So which exactly is quiet quitting? Oh, I thought it was the second one. I think it's the second mm, one. Yeah. 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 Right, right, right. I think the first one is just being on time. <laughs> <laughs> I clock yeah, in, yeah. I clock out, no. you know, and, and I do what I can. necessary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know? But because mm. I think the first one and the second one, they're not mutually exclusive. Okay. Like mm. you can be, you can be clocking out and still also be doing bare minimum <laughs> at work, right? And I think that's generally the idea where, I mean, there are a few groups of people that you can classify as quiet quitting. But I think most of the people that we're going to talk to or the people that are thinking about this thing is really the people that are like, you know, I come in, I do what needs to be done. Don't ask me to do more. I have no yesing. I don't want to do more on this job or in this place. You know, and uh, the bare minimum. Like, yeah, to, and they're probably not past. even doing their best. They're just doing, going through motion. Mm. Uh, I, that's it. They might not even try to improve things. Mm. Mm, mm, and that's mm. my way of defining quiet quitting. Okay. Do you have any uh, definition of quiet quitting? Actually, I agree with Kelvin, the second one. I think it's. I think it grows from that to, you know, the China, you know, tamping. Yeah, uh, I feel like this, they're on the same trajectory. Yeah, yes. it, it stands for quiet quitting. It's... Because, uh, you know, China, they're having all these uh, issues where people, they don't want to work. They literally stay at home. So, because they say that, you know, the country still want them to work more, but they already work so hard. They work even more. Yeah, so, yeah, the 996 culture, mm. everything. So, they, they have this question of why we should work even more than before. Mm. Yeah, since you already worked so hard before. Mm. Yeah, mm. I think that's a very good uh, discussion also. Okay, great, great. So, then, the question today, right, is can quiet quitting the uh, healthy thing, right? Is there, is there value in quiet quitting? Like, does it benefit you? Is there impact to your life, you know, rather than just cruising by and you know, just kind of take it as what it is? I feel that if there is a bigger purpose, there is a, there's something else that's going on in your life and you're essentially just conserving energy, waiting it out or, or taking time to think and reflect so that you can make your move, then okay, quiet quitting, I think it's still healthy. I don't think it's healthy for the company. But, <laughs> uh, I, I'm speaking for the entrepreneurs out there. I don't think it's healthy at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if today's episode is about speaking for that person, then I think, yeah, it's healthy because you are shielding yourself while you are taking your next step. 
But if this is going to be your de facto uh, modus operandi, the way you're going to do things, I don't think it's healthy because you're going to spend, what, eight hours every day doing quiet quitting. That's going to have a, have a toll on your mental wellness because I really don't think humans are designed to just, you know, do the bare minimum. Okay, maybe we can define a little bit what is healthy and what is considered healthy. Healthy, mm. I would define it as there is happiness, there is fulfillment, there's peace, love, joy. This this core three emotions peace, that love, all joy. humans Not blood, sweat, tears. <laughs> 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 that's that's probably the antithesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a yes. So, yeah. So, I would say that would be of my peace, love, and joy. Right? That means you're 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 at peace at where you are at. Uh, you are joyful. You're excited to go to work, and you feel like you're bringing your best of your personality and your strengths and talents to, for the betterment of the organization. I think that's very valid. I think love is joy. It's, it's very nice. You know, uh, and Can work. you stop throwing taglines? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't okay, help okay, it. Okay, okay, <laughs> Sorry. Okay. okay. Yes. I'll try not to rhyme. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but being in a company, I think for most people, it's sometimes quite tough to find uh, what Eric has said. Like, love, peace, joy. Especially when you are on this path where, you know, you are on a university, you graduate, you get this job. Like, even when I study poly, why I go to this course? Oh, because people tell me this is the highest paying mm. course. That's what I Which is don't. not an inherent issue, right? Yes. Like, if your goal is to make money mm. and you are, you live in this reality, right? I mean, so because I think a lot of people live in the dream. Right? In a sense of like, oh, I hope, I hope, I hope. Okay, I get it. We all have hope and we all have dreams. And, and some sometimes some people tell me, oh, you see all these young people, they come out, they hope and dream. I'm like, yeah, if your education system come out, these people don't hope, right? You'd be more concerned about what's <laughs> happening with the society, right? Mm. So people that come out and just step into broader workforce and broader society should feel hopeful and should dream and should think about these things, right? So I don't don't think that's a bad thing mm. but the idea here is that after they come in there's a reality check right yes. it's like, oh you know uh you you live in this world you live in this society uh, at, at this point in time you still gotta make money to feed yourselves and all those things right so the, mm. so when people then start to set into this reality and then they make a decision based on the idea that oh i need to make money Mm -hmm. So then, you know, that's why I do this and this and so and so. I change a career. Maybe I finish studying this and I come out, I realize, ah, design may have You know, <laughs> so engineer, oh, cannot make money. Very calian. Right. So then I, I, I join another sector and it makes money and, and all that. And, and that's not an inherent issue, right? Like, like that, that, is, that is in itself taking the decision to do something to, to better their life. And to me, that is that is counter to quiet quitting. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. quiet quitting is a little bit of a like, I'm just going to like, yeah. you know, this is what it is. I'm just going to take it here, you know, and I'm just going to like cruise by, you know. But for someone that goes through that kind of path to have the clear conscious decision that I do this because I want to make money, mm. I think on some level, it's okay. Then that's not quiet quitting. At least you got yeah. a purpose, right? You got a purpose, yes. right? I mean, maybe a story can help, right? Because um, I actually quite quit, right? I told you, I, it was not a joke. I, I was quite quitting because I, I studied comp science uh, in the US. So uh, I, had a, I, I had to serve a bond. So I was oh, working for a company. I hope that don't get me in trouble. <laughs> right, I was working for a company. I think you also studied comp science. Yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah. god. High five. Also at NUS. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. My, my junior. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what happened was I was working for that job and the fact of the matter is I wasn't given much to do. I, I just every morning I just need to spend time working on a certain website. You know, and that's it. And then nobody in the office and I would have like two hour lunches, um, one hour tea breaks, you know, and I was just not motivated. At the beginning, first three months, I was super on fire. I keep asking for work to do. They said, oh, don't worry, we'll give you, we'll give you, but nothing comes. Mm -hmm. So that was when I realized, like, oh, you know, I, I, there's no purpose and, and I feel like people don't appreciate me. Um, and so I decided, okay, well, since the, the aggressive method or the hustle method doesn't work, then I do the opposite method, which is I'm just going to be invisible and do my own thing. So I was quite quitting uh, in that sense. But I had a purpose and the purpose was I knew that it's only going to be four years at least there's a time frame. And I said, that there was this narrative I, I tell myself, which is since I can't get out of this situation, why not make the best out of it? I think this is important because the minute you're resigned, because I, quiet quitting implies resignation, right? Mm -hmm. That you are resigned. You, you are not in control anymore. And the minute you ever think that you're not in control, the minute you just have that narrative, you just give yourself a mental suicide. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt that my turning point was when somehow, uh, probably I had good mentors around me, you know, telling me, you can't change your situation, then change the, your story. So I told myself, you know what, I'm going to make the best out of it. 
So uh, since I'm in IT, so what I did was I, I decided to be the friendliest person in my company, make off all these friends because one day they may be my customer because I was thinking of going into uh, corporate training already. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to make friends with everybody because one day they can hire me. Mm -hmm. So that gave me some purpose. Yeah. Com science people mm -hmm. need corporate training. Amen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Any help to talk Sorry, I was from this school. Uh. Yo, oh. uh, yes. <laughs> hey, well, the com science is a corridor. Forgivable. Corridor back Forgivable. then. Uh, you, well, it was the corridor. Yes. <laughs> that blue building. So, the blue building was corridor. Yeah. So I always ask, wow, this is a this is a school, uh, right? But I won't pass here to get to the canteen. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, yeah. so but so that's that's what I felt was my saving grace that I, I changed my narrative. Make the best out of that situation. Yeah, but I want to push you on the part sure. where we talk about like, you know, uh, you feel like you're not in control. Mm. But I would argue to say that people that are quite quitting are taking control. What kind of control? Taking control of their life to know that, okay, mm. this one, I don't want. I'm just going to cruise. You know, but for and, how long? And it's okay. And, so, and, 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 I, think, and I, I think my view is that um, where you're coming from is you can quite quit if there's something else you're working on outside. Or that there's right? a reason. Like, you know, there's a reason, there's a reason why you're, you're doing something. Energy you're conserving right? energy. Yeah. You want to do all that. But my view is you can quite quit as long as you're okay with it. Right? So if you are quite quitting and you think that this is okay and it's not going to affect other aspects of your life, even if you don't have something big out there, you know, it's fine. As long as you are okay with it. And I do think that there's a big bunch of people. I mean, I see the forums. Right? And then some people say, why is quiet quitting a thing? Right? We've been doing this since forever. <laughs> right? yes. It's like, why is it a thing now? Right? And, and the idea here is if you are doing it and you know that, okay, let's say you work in a big, big organization, right? And uh, the like HR Sally will never see you, right? Or like, <laughs> like your director will never ever see you, mm -hmm. you know, but you are part of the organization, you do something uh, and you're okay with it. You're not going to like try very hard to be seen or be heard or make progress here. Uh, on some level, you're quite quitting. Right? Just doing the bare minimum, you're getting paid to a level where you're not fired. Because if you're fired, then you're not doing bare minimum. You're doing below <laughs> bare minimum. <laughs> right? So you're doing bare minimum and you go past and you're happy. You spend your energy in other things. Uh, I guess, okay, now if you set it as a yeah. context, I guess it's because I have another frame in my head, right? Because mm. I, I believe, and it's not true, it's just my belief mm. that, that you know, we are all here on earth to evolve, to grow. Mm. And even work is just a vehicle for personal evolution. Mm -hmm. And if you don't work it, that means if you don't put in your 100% and you don't learn or, or you don't stretch yourself because quiet quitting also implies you're just doing whatever bare minimum, but you don't stretch yourself, then you, you miss out on the potential to be way better than who you are. And again, based on what Reggie said, it is okay if that's not your value. Mm -hmm. But I'm speaking out to those of you who somehow you know that you are meant for more. Then I'm saying that don't ever think that whatever you're going through is permanent. It is temporary. You know, the, you know, like how before a plant become a plant, it is dark, right? The seed is underground, and he thinks that that's the end of the world. But given time, water, sun, it will sprout. <laughs> so I'm speaking to that group. Okay? Yeah, yeah. That I, get that, I, I get think it. if that's you and and you resonate with what I just said, just understand it's temporary. Protect yourself by coming up with a more positive, constructive mm. narrative. Mm. Pick up the skills, build the network wait out the opportunity and then you leave. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, for that group. Yeah, I, I get it. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. I'm just amazed you got always have a story. <laughs> it's like, what wow, the plant, it's a dark seed. <laughs> it's true. You know it's why? Like, <laughs> as I plant alone, the seed is under the yeah. soil. I get yeah. it. Yes. Two reasons. Yes, number yes. one is because you're 40 now. I'm 40 now. So I, I have enough Been years. through enough. Yeah. Have a lot of stories. And, and number two is because I've been through those things and I needed to make sense out of it. Yeah. So you when I was trying to, to go through. Yes, yes, yes. I was trying to make sense and eventually that was how I got out. It's yeah. true, it's true. I get it. Mm. We all need some sort of narrative and story to, to push us. Correct. Forward. You don't go crazy, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and which is why sometimes the search for meaning makes people go a little bit bonkers because all the stories, uh, you've got to break them all down and regroup, right? So it yes. takes some time and, so and, and that, that thing is, is complicated. What about you, Kelvin? So I actually quite resonate with what he says like, so because when I first graduate, I don't have much work to do either. It's all Kong size proper. Because when you are a fresh grad, no one will trust you with their code. Mm. <laughs> ah, <laughs> hey, hey, wow. He says the real reason. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was also sort of like, uh, I was quite quitting because I, I, I was forced to, not because I want to. Uh, then I went to my second job because I was too bored in my first job. Mm. And in my second job, they were giving me too much work. So is that the bare minimum? Are you when they are okay? Let's say if the boss overloads with you with work, right? Then you have to do the job, and you don't have the capacity to 
think more out of it. So is that considered as quiet quitting? No, no. I, I think that one is just bad management from your company side. They, they but on, on, your, on your side, is but it... But you quit? You didn't, you didn't quite <clears throat> quit, right? You still do it, right? You still did the work, right? Right. So I'm just doing the bare minimum, which is a lot of work. La. <laughs> so, oh, that's interesting. That's uh, interesting. So is that considered as quiet quitting? Because while I was doing that, a lot of work, that, right? That just means you consider quitting, la. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I didn't consider quitting. No, no, I, I get what you're saying because right. uh, because it if if from that view right, then it makes the people that can quiet quit sounds quite privileged, you know. <laughs> that means right, yeah. it, it means your company has extra resources such that they only need you to do minimal. Then you can still text your friend, play Facebook. You know, no, nobody play Facebook anymore. You better <laughs> mobile legend. Yeah, yeah, mobile legend, <laughs> whatever. And, and can do all these other things. <laughs> And you can cruise by. Like mm. the, the very fact that you're saying cruise by, you're kind of chill, right? Mm. Right? Mm. You're just going, going to. But for a situation like that, where you're just working so hard, yeah, right? Have a and that's the quick. minimum, you cannot even quite quit. That's a, that's an interesting. <laughs> point. And I will not say that is that is quite quitting. Yeah, right, I say so that is just slave driving. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, but okay. I think a lot of this stems from a lot from company culture, I feel. Because uh, uh. last night I used to work. Uh, in a job or so then when you realize that a company that doesn't listen to feedback or they don't like really get to know you like what you're doing are you okay with it then you will start to quiet quit if they don't really listen or things don't adjust I think company culture plays a very big role in this la, for, for my opinion mm, okay so so what, what you're saying on that ground is that other than the reality that you can actually practice some level of quiet quitting. The reason why people do it is because they don't feel like they are part of this thing. They don't feel like their ideas are being respected or they don't feel like, you know, this place is worthy of me spending more energy and bandwidth and time. Is that kind of where it is? Yes. That's what I feel most people felt like. I think most people like what Eric says, they want to do their best, but sometimes the company just don't let them do their best. Mm. <laughs> they are stuck there, you know, they're like, I want to do more, but I can't do more, but I have this energy, I don't know where to put. That's why they do something on the side. Yeah, exactly. yeah. That's why I say, uh, uh, it's never just the employee's problem. Mm. I always think that the employee, employer, if you really notice a lot of people are quiet quitting, rather than just blaming your people and, and shooting them down, maybe take a good look at your own company culture. Are you, are, are you actually causing that to happen? It's true. It's because true. really, every human being that's born, at least, uh, I mean, people, I believe the best in people, no one ever just want to give the bad bit of it. No mm. one. No, no. And, and I think that's interesting because... Uh, it's quite a tendency, right, for companies to then blame the people. You know, it's, right? easier. Yeah. it's easier. It's yeah. easier. Yeah. But, but I just shout out all you bosses and uh, people in the HR and, and all that. You know, if one person quit, two person quit, you know, maybe it's an individual case, but if there are many people, you know, just droning around zombieing or even just outright quitting, right, then it's a structural problem. Right? Then it's a company's issue. Yeah. So mm. then the million dollar question is, should I quit or should I quiet quit? I think it depends on the opportunity that comes by. La. Like, like how you quit your job already, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> so, so the reason I stayed on with my first job was because I was applying for PR. Uh, <laughs> so, so I was applying for PR and I was trying to complete my job. Then the moment everything aligns, I just, ooh, it's just just throw my letter and run. Mm, mm. So I think quiet quitting, you can consider it as a phase of like uh, relaxing lah. And <laughs> right, what, what what's that? What, what's cruising, it cruising, <laughs> cruising. Yeah. Relaxing no, like, also uh, works. Yes. Just no, don't let your boss know you're relaxing. That's the thing yes, in yes, Chinese, yes. like if you are you are resting so that you can walk a longer yes, road. Yes, yes, yes. So so I think quiet quitting can be considered as that. Mm. Uh, then once you have recharged, just continue doing your things. Uh, when the op- opportunity comes by, though. Fair point. So should you quit or should you quiet quit? Well, if I'm speaking for that individual yes. and the individual have a certain purpose and the individual have a positive narrative, yeah, by all means, cruise so that you can have a better future for yourself. Mm. But if I'm speaking for the company, I don't think it's a very good thing that your guys are quiet quitting because their productivity is low and you are, you're you're not going to be doing very well. If so you'd rather does get the company to... So, so, quit. so if I'm speaking to entrepreneurs, you need to look out for those quiet quitters. <laughs> 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 because, because every dollar that you give to them, you could have given to someone else who is a lot more motivated. But if you notice everyone's quiet quitting, then forget about trying to hire more people. Go and get yourself a consultant and fix your culture first before you start hiring. Because otherwise, you are the one that's poisoning the people to become quiet quitters. Mm. So then if someone is quiet quitting and they are on the fence thinking of whether they should just quit, right? what, what would you what would be your thoughts? Then I'll ask that person, do you have a, what's next? Do you know what's going on next? Because if you don't know what's going on next, then I'd rather you stay where you are. At least you're doing the bare minimum, right? Mm-hmm. And then go make a better plan. 
Mm. Same thing like how I have a lot of nine to five years who will say that, hey Eric, or nine, nine, nine to six years, they will say, I want to be an entrepreneur <laughs> like oh, you. Nine to six already. Nine, nine to six, yeah, <laughs> okay, I forgot. Okay. Nine to six, they, they will say that, I want to be an entrepreneur. I, I think I'm pretty good at training. I'm pretty good at doing something. So I say that, don't quit first, right? Because the, the market, it can be quite brutal. Yeah. Yes. So until you can... <laughs> guys until, speaking from experience. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. Until your side hustle can be equal or more than your salary, then you can, and, and then you can consider quitting. So be smart about when to quit. Timing is important too. Mm. And, and that is one dimension, right? In a sense that if you're concerned about money, that is a big concern in your life, in your decision-making process, mm. then yes, that is a legit thing, right? But I would say for some people, if you are thinking about, you know, like quitting and without something else next, right? And, and I don't think it's a bad thing for people to embrace that emptiness, Right. I don't think it's a bad thing for people to embrace the emptiness because it's so often we hear things like, oh yeah, what's your next thing? You know, yeah. like what, what are your plans? So I just no plans, lah. What's wrong with having no plans? <laughs> right. And it's it's if you cannot embrace emptiness, it's very hard for you to fill up with the things that matter to you. Beautiful. Mm. Well, you see, I also got tagline now, oh. huh? Very good, huh? TikTok yeah. shots, huh? Yeah. yeah. But to me, that is the part that is is really lacking in the conversation because everybody that's pushing certain ideas are either very emotional or they have a higher incentive that they want all of us to be more productive or do more things. You know, but in my view, on a personal level, if you've already accumulated some level of wealth and you feel like there's no prospects here and you don't want to be like, you know, that that wayang guy that works very, very hard to try to get promoted, I get it. Need to piao yen one, I want to <laughs> <laughs> From what need to tell you, know, I get it, right? Or you need to go yeah. out and network. That's why it's called performance <laughs> review. <laughs> 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 performance review. <laughs> I give you three stars, but like, I give you oh, three stars. Like, very good. Code. Good. So three stars. Right? So if you're not like that, you don't want to go further and you've accumulated enough, you feel like you want to, you know, um, embrace other aspects of your life, but you're not sure what you want, instead of trying to cling on there and fill up your life with all these things that don't matter, why not you just like drop it? And mm. it's very difficult, you know? Mm. 24 hours, huh, you've got no work, you've got nothing to do. And if you cannot answer that question, then fundamentally you've got to push back the answer. So then what are you living for? Mm. Right? So so those are, those are a, a bit higher, more complicated questions. So that means, Reggie, what you're saying is that if let's say that there's no plans, but they can afford to yes. quit, they should... You can. So that they create enough space for reflection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And embrace yeah. the emptiness. I think that's kind of where where I think it's it's lacking. Yeah, because there you can't stop doing nothing, right? You know? Yeah, right? Doing yeah, nothing yeah. is forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean and I, I come from a view that, you know, you quite quit not to forever quite quit, or you lay flat not to forever lay flat. You like you, it's like you lay flat to one day stand up again. Mm. Right? Or you quite quit so that you come back stronger. Yeah. Right? So and and that l- that space in between where you can take a step back from all these things I think that's the part that is very scary for a lot of people you know like nothing to do like every day nothing to do you know? it's, it's very hard one right yeah. you have to kind of fill up your life with different set of things and I think that's the part that um, <coughs> emptiness is something that more people should very embrace. good point oh, because then you mm. kind of free yourself from all the noise and all the narratives out there asking yes. you to do this do that mm. and you find, get to do, find maybe find something for yourself yeah, yeah. was that your journey? yeah I feel like that was my journey Right, like because I, I emptied myself so much. People think I sell sell. No, no. <laughs> I, I emptied myself so much that I mean I got to a point where I'm a lot more comfortable with where I am, what mm. I have, what I do. Um yeah, you know, if you think I'm very wise, then yeah. <laughs> because I did a, a path that's very different from everyone. And I feel that Many people are horrible with embracing the emptiness. It's always what's next. Every time I go for a meeting, oh, what's next? Huh? What's next? Like, Why can't you just be like that? Uh, why can't you just mm-hmm. be like that for a while and recognize that you need some time for other things to formulate? You know, need, you need sometimes for, for things to coalesce. You, know, you need to give things time. But if every single moment of your life you want to pack with like all the productivity hacks, right? Every single moment, like, wow, pack, 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 pack. like this guy wake up at 4 a.m., right? It's like, it's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, saying, wow. Uh, he's, he's like, <laughs> 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 That's a different That's a different discussion. Yeah. You know, but he he you wake up at 5 a.m. That's the on purpose. That's the on purpose. Uh, but four AM is a sweet puta. Okay. Five AM is, is on impressive. purpose. Wow. Okay, okay. Yeah, but but to me it's it's too much. You know, and, mm. and you end up in a certain grind and all that, which is okay if you if you enjoy what you're doing and you find that this is worthy. The basis of repetition is progress. If you keep repeating, mm. you will progress. Right? But if you don't want to be here, then why you repeat? Why not you just take a break? 
right? Mm. And and empty yourself and then recalibrate and, and work through all that things. I guess that's why um knowing having good financial education is important, right? Can can you imagine if can, like let's say like, if I listen to financial coconut and then you know I learn how to save my money, invest my money, I actually have the option to really quit and not have to quiet quit. Mm. Or you can live in a kampong. Kampong <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't spend money, what really? Mm. Really, Where? really, really. Where? I think Reggie, yeah, here, Reggie, like, Reggie can share with you. A bit hard, a bit hard. Maybe yeah. you can go to Kelvin's old home. Ah. Uh. <laughs> 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 and kampong is a place where people don't spend money. You plug, you you the water comes on the stream. You plug. I mean, I live in my friend's hometown. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, okay, that's a different discussion altogether. But but. If you go to the rural parts of, of the world, actually, uh, money is not as prevalent in terms of its transactional value. But, but uh, in Singapore, it's very hard. Lah, right? So, mm. yeah, yeah, you got to listen. Listen to our channel. <laughs> <laughs> I think this brings to a lot of different perspectives to quiet quitting. Because oh, sometimes mm. people quiet quit maybe because what Reggie is saying. It means I conserve my energy. I try to find out what's next, you know, yeah. embrace the emptiness. So, actually, quiet quitting, like, after this decision may not be that bad. Yeah. It's your intention of quiet quitting. It, it, that's their important. intention. But yes. Some people are quiet quitting, but they have no intention. They just <laughs> yes, resign. Yes. You know, yeah. that's the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and those people drown, right? And yeah. I think that's why we, we want it's to okay. no, no, add more facets to, to quiet quitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great, great, Perfect. great. In closing, um, what is one thing that you've picked up in today's discussion? Well, actually, my biggest takeaway is really have proper financial management. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paid to say that because if back then I had that, then I could really just quit. Mm, I could just pay off my scholarship and really just do what Reggie was saying, right? Have some emptiness and reflect. That would have been great for my career and life. Mm. Mm, I think quiet quitting must come together with purpose. Maybe you don't have to have purpose at the start, la, but eventually, I think even you will get bored of quiet quitting eventually. La. I think everyone would. That's why that's why people who quiet quit, they find other things to do, right? Either by, even by watching TV, you are finding... Purpose in life? <laughs> so, <laughs> right? Like the Huang Jing 3 p.m. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, living, yeah, living some other people's life. La. So, I think everyone has some things that they want to do. La. Is, whether it's work or your personal life. Mm. Uh, so, I think quiet quitting is healthy for me, at least. La. I think being, when you quiet quit, I think being conscious about it is very important. When you quiet quit, you must keep asking yourself, what's the intention to me? Mm. Yeah, why do you start to have this uh, feeling of slowing down? Is it because you're bored of this or is it you need some time to rest? I think knowing that can help you will not feel so guilty, quiet quit, uh, mm. and quiet quit with intention. Yeah, fair, fair. I'm just saying, uh, Huang Qing Nianhua really very cheap to advertise on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can see media called red card 3 pm is a very cheap segment. And just what so happened if you are selling to the older generation, you should explore those verticals, huh? Okay, but yeah, in in, in closing, I think uh, quiet quitting for me, you know, it's a it's a phase, uh, and it's very normal for people to kind of go through such a mm. situation when you are you, you're not you, you're not fully bought into the organizational the organization's idea, and the organization has no space for you to shape it, and you feel like this is enough, and if it's enough for you, okay, go for it. If at some point you feel like there's something else more worthy, okay, then also go for it. Right? And if for a long period of time you just feel like this quiet quitting is also getting draining, right? Then why not just take a break? Right? I think mm. that's uh that's my basis for it. Like it, it can be very healthy as long as you're more aware of like why you are doing why you're doing it. Lah. So yes, thank you. Thank you for your time. We'll see you uh, next week. Take care guys. Woo! Take care.